After 37 years of career in space industry and probably reaching one of the some of the coveted places in the industry, you may expect I may give you advice on how to plan your career. But frankly speaking, I never planned it. I still remember I joined Kharagpur IIT in 1980 in the Department of Electronics. And you know, within a month I left it. I know anybody in the world will call me a fool to live in Kharagpur IIT. I don't know. I found they have a very, very bright people, very, very regimented classes, but somewhere something was missing. Or maybe it was a lacuna in myself. I didn't know how to adjust. I came to Jadavpur University and uh, in the electronics department, and suddenly I found it was my liking. Maybe I like the Satyendra's canteen more than the university classes. That may be the difference. I came out from this other in 1984. I had three offers on the job. The highest paid was Jensen Nicholson. Then next paid was a, a Hindustan Computers Limited, also very paid heavily in those days standard and the third the lowest salary and probably less than half of the highest salary I had that was ISRO. I still remember that a princely sum of 650 rupees basic total 1368 rupees and in those days ISRO was not known that much you know Okay, they are doing some research, there is a lot of talk of values and all, where they had a Bhaskar and Aryavata and a side program. But, you know, not many people were aware. They were not sinosure of Indian people, like the ISRO is today. And, uh, and I had another offer, you know, to join the School of Automation of Indian Institute of Science. In fact, I decided to join the School of Automation, went to buy a ticket for Bangalore and for unknown reason I bought a ticket for Ahmedabad for Space Application Center. And uh, everybody told, you know, you are a fool. You know, the School of Automation that was the top post master degree course in computer engineering was the most coveted and you need to have a great ranks of top 20 to get into that department in the school of automation which incidentally I had but uh, I don't know what for what reason I chose ISRO but I only wanted to give it a try probably and I came to ISRO and found the they are actually recruiting mainly from IITs and IAS. And they, from non IITs, there were, I think, that, that batch they have recruited three engineers. I was one of them. And there was no taker for me because whomever, you know, those days, then two new projects, the very prestigious projects have started. One is that the IRS project and the INSAT project and all glamorous people, people, students from this all prestigious institutes were readily absorbed. I had to wait for a month to get a posting. At that time one group was being formed from radar remote sensing. Actually Professor Satish Dhawan said you know that the, the future lies in radar remote sensing and there are hardly any people and it was being led by one engineer who was very passionate but hardly any funding. 
Sri N. S. Pillai. I was put under him, and I must confess, the radar is the one of the toughest subject we are taught. I missed the classes more than I attended, and my my fate is such was such that uh, I was destined to work in the field of radar. And then the first thing we were given, we didn't have budget, uh, hardly any budget. Even we didn't have a designated building lab. In fact, we were seated in a borrowed places, borrowed labs, and uh, we were given one radar, Marconi radar, donated by Navy. It was not working, and uh, for some reason they thought this can be repaired and made a. Imaging radar and aware of the few fellows of the team, and you know, for anybody starting a career with a broken hardware, you may consider it's a misfortune. But for me, it was a blessing. You know, everybody was working in the campus of a very prestigious projects where they were. Bonding, working hardware, and we are at an other way round. We have one hardware which is already burnt. Nobody knows where it is burnt, but we are supposed to repair it, and we did repair it. In fact, I wrote, developed the display system for this, uh, and we used to fly in a you know that uh, Vintage Dakota aircraft. By 1992, we built our first synthetic aperture radar. It was very excited, you know. We were flying in the Air King 300. I know that is the NRSC has bought at that time, and it was. I think we started integrating in January, and we have been testing the hardware from January 1992. To almost May, and there is something happened. You know, as I say, India was in the throes of becoming fifth country in the world, which could, can be boastfully proud of flying a synthetic aperture radar. And you know, uh, payloads. Have no fathers, but the credit has uh, many, many fathers who broke, who appeared from nowhere, and it was on the throw of getting the credit. Suddenly, found is a one committee was formed, which will integrate and fly. Obviously, that the committee was mostly manned by people who were waiting in the wings, and the success they came, and I was thrown out of. I was not part of the team. To, to, to be utter surprise, this sir burned fifty-two times. In fact, the people who were responsible to take the credit first time, they found it's a failure, and they unanimously petition the management that a, a hardware. Has to be handed over to me. After all, it is a failure. Nobody wants to be take the credit, and I was asked to repair it. And so the first day I flew this, I did a trick. I said, "Let me do a trick." I requested pilot to fly in a direction opposite to the ground radar, and. I switched on the sar from the ground itself, and to my surprise, the it, on the aircraft was climbing. It was working, and when it reached around ten thousand or eleven thousand feet, it burnt up. And uh, immediately understood, we have forgotten the, our class physics education of class eight. In the aircraft, the so-called pressurized aircraft, the pressure is maintained equivalent to ten thousand feet height of the atmosphere, and when the pressure reaches to that point, 
there was happening, there must have been a corona discharge was happening and it was burning down. So once we diagnosed the problem, we came down and uh, what we did, you know, we took the hardware in the chambers, we did potting so that the or an high voltage circuits will not get corona discharge and we flew. I know that I still remember the very successful flight. On May 20th, the day we have also had a successful flight of ASLV to the very proud moment after FPJ Kalam had that successful flight of SLB3, we had a string of failures and then the ASLB2 became successful, a second flight and uh, on the same day we had a SAR and the SAR worked beautifully, the images were excellent, we could proudly claim that uh, we were the fifth country in the world to build synthetic aperture radar. And look at my pet. I was not destined to succeed. The credits could have been somebody else's. It is that somebody else's did not know how to observe the situation and make the requisite correction. They ended up failure and they stumped the failure on my head. After all, you know, the people would have forgotten the other fellows failed. People would have remembered the last fellow who has failed. And it was my luck or my analytical skill. I saw the success. I always fervently believe that Paul Coelho. If your intentions are right and if you follow your passion, you will find that the whole world colludes to come to your support. And I have seen more often than not this fact coming true. The only key advice, follow what your heart says. That's all. Thank you very much.